good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are across the globe. Thank you for joining me here in the cyberspace and thank you to the team at Pivot 2020 for inviting me to participate. My name is Britta Boyer and I'm at Loughborough University, a final year PhD student in the Design Innovation Department. I'd first like to acknowledge this wonderful photograph of the southern tip of Bali and to thank David Biner at IndoEye for putting this into the public sphere in exchange for financial donations to help the Balinese community recover from tourism collapse, a community in which I have been part of for 20 years and has provided the rich uh, environment in which I've been able to conduct my research. I'd first like to introduce you to my work Creativity Narratives from Bali seems an important moment for design to challenge its functional, rationalistic and industrial tradition from which it has emerged and to decolonize its core. Hence, it also seems an appropriate time for the study to be situated in Indonesia, the place in which the notion of decolonization was birthed in 1955 at the Bandung Conference. The inquiry is positioned within cultural studies of design and investigates creativity through the experiences and actions of designers working across international borders and nations. The study aim was to identify emergent social patterns at intersections beyond neoliberal ideologies, exemplifying alternative ways of interacting in the world and to reclaim design for what Arturo Escobar described as other world making purposes. I would first like to explain social sculptures and why these structures can be seen as other world-making purposes. Shelley Sachs, a contemporary scholar, describes social sculptures as coming to our senses and explores the connection between imagination, transformation and paradigm shift in practice. She develops social sculpture projects and processes that focus on imaginal thought, experiential knowing and developing new imaginaries. My own contribution to social sculptures comes from an autoethnographic perspective, sometimes referred to as an insider anthropology, and one which is built from feminist epistemologies of situated knowledge. I lived in Indonesia as a young child, and then again as an adult, and prior to entry into academia, was a design consultant in the fashion industry, operating out of both the UK and Bali for almost 20 years. The fact that I am a woman certainly fills a missing gap in the design literature. I have a natural affinity with borderlands and edges, having never lived in my birthplace and growing up across three continents. However, I do acknowledge that this global mobility as a third culture child still remains a privileged position. As a result of my experiences, the research seeks to go beyond epistemologies of the global north towards an insight of cross-cultural relationships. These relational dimensions are what Donna Haraway describes as intra-relations and Homi Baba describes as the in-between spaces in which we find meaning. A designer's worldview and practice are connected and frequently changed through cultural and international experiences, yet this grey area of change thinking, seldom explored in design research, is one of the gaps in knowledge that this proposal seeks to address. These transformations can result in hybrid ways of living that have nothing to do with the Western construct of design and more to do with creativity, intra-actions across cultural and national boundaries. These intra-actions can be transformative for both the individual and broader community if the diversity of these experiences results in what Shelley Sachs describes as a widening of our response ability or developing the capacity of a designer. This development and capacity building takes place not as a moral imperative from the outside, but an inner transformation that compels a person to change. Entry into the field was enabled through a conceptual framework of the Beyonder, a term coined by cognitive scientist and creativity researcher Paul Torrance. His research found that the characteristics of Beyonders had more to do with the worldview and ability to change, diversify, learn and adapt. It's through the work of Torrance that we can come to learn of creativity as a process of becoming sensitive to problems, deficiencies, gaps in knowledge and missing elements, disharmonies and so on. As change agents, these beyonders define their own projects as well as know how to order and direct their experiences to find relevant knowledge 
which is both transformational to themselves and their practice. Before I introduce you to Chakra and his self-titled life story, The Spirit of the Hibiscus, I would like to highlight an important factor in the work. The concept of authorship and representation became an important and major component to break through cognitive empires of the West. We, participants in the research and I, collectively agreed to operate under an International Creative Commons license as an obvious tool through which to create transparency and shared meaning. Another playful idea which I took on in the field was this concept of othering the other, a way to decolonize my own research methods through hiring of a local artist called Anaro, who accompanied me on all of the field work. Anaro became a participatory silent witness, observing me in the research and documenting all that he saw. This supported both my own reflective practice as well as became an aesthetic connector to the storytelling. Another component of the mixed method approach is to build a reflexive relationship with digital materiality to facilitate new insights. The focus on process became a means to discover emerging themes and as part of my collaboration with the participants. The use of filmmaking as a methodology is rooted in fields such as anthropology and sociology and as a method for participants and viewers to explore experiences and meaning making beyond words. So finally, I introduce you to Chakra, the spirit of the hibiscus. Chakra is the son of a rice farmer, a chance encounter and his own response ability towards a homeless English woman in Bali in the 1970s meant Chakra was later invited to the UK to gain his degree in education and sustainable development, and now works as a permaculture designer, trying to preserve the native soils of his island to the ever-increasing development on the island. Upon reviewing Chakra's life story, I understood the significance of his story in relationship to before and after the Green Revolution. His explicit detail of everything in the rice field instantly dying overnight a distinct memory of how Suharto's dictatorship forcibly introduced green revolution packages in Indonesia. Farmers were forced to use new, improved seeds produced by corporations which required high levels of fertilization and pesticides. Those who refused to use the seeds were imprisoned. As a result, the cultivation of Bali's traditional seeds declined and the water became polluted with agrochemicals. Families were made dependent on the Obat, the Indonesian word for medicine. Echoes of Rachel Carson's Silent Spring come to mind. Chakra's storytelling of before, his early childhood, is filled with the good life and soil entanglements of substantial commonness as described by Maria Puy de la Bella Casa. As he describes playing with the frogs, collecting geese eggs at 4am and visits with his father carrying a large torch to catch the eels for selling in the market. These childhood imaginaries, describing life playing in the rice fields, reanimating the life within them, is transforming contemporary human soil affections by developing a sense of shared aliveness. The social sculptures of Chakra can exemplify permaculture as a set of design principles for enlivenment. Permaculture design is described as a practice of of being concerned with sustainable human settlements as well as preserving and extending natural systems. It's a philosophy embedded with values and ethics. It alludes to a practice of personal responsibility and in the case of Chakra, a sacred activism within his community that gently diffuses away the failures of development happening on his island. The spirit of the hibiscus, the story of Chakra, demonstrates the storied nature of human conduct and offers us a distinct style of knowing through bottom-up life story narratives new ways of seeing and manifesting the future of design that integrate the plurality of the world beyond the geopolitics of current knowledge. Communities like Bali already have substantial capital and opportunity to exemplify these model frameworks. Model frameworks that enhance the value of enlivenment as a deep corrective principle that drives how we perceive, think and act in design. The preliminary findings of this study start to reveal hybrid ways of living and social movements through these social sculptures. They're living matrices that exemplify lifestyles that diffuse capitalism, patriarchy and colonialism by choosing alternative structures of living through language, thought and actions. In Chakra's case, 
his choice to be a permaculture designer and try to tackle the development on the island. These emergent commons demonstrate a performative and prefigurative nature of rebellion, as described by de Souza Santos, movements that can assist in dissolving the traditions of duality and market-driven economies towards a transcendent paradigm of enlivenment and shared livelihoods. Thank you for listening today, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation.